In this video, I'm going to explain the idea of unsaturated and saturated hydrocarbon molecules. A hydrocarbon molecule is one where the molecule is made up of predominantly carbons and hydrogens. The idea of saturation or unsaturation is that the carbon atom is either fully saturated or unsaturated with hydrogen atoms. An example of a fully saturated hydrogen molecule is C5H12. Here I'm choosing five carbons, so the N in this general formula for fully saturated hydrocarbons, the N is five, therefore there will be 12 hydrogens, so two times N, which is five, two times five is 10, of course, plus two is 12. So this is how I'm using this general formula for fully saturated hydrocarbon molecules. If I want to choose one with five carbons, there will be 12 hydrogens. Now the Lewis structure for this is as follows. Now this is one of many Lewis structures that can be drawn for this formula. This is the simplest Lewis structure that I'm drawing. And for convenience, I'm going to represent the hydrogens as these green lines. And you can see if you study the structure, you'll see the pairs of hydrogen atoms on the carbons. What am I talking about? Well, let's take a look. There's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Well, that's the 2n in this little equation here, this little model for the formula. Then the plus 2 are the two hydrogens at the ends of the molecule. So this is a fully saturated hydrocarbon molecule where the carbons are fully saturated or packed with hydrogens. No double bonds, no single bond, uh, excuse me, no double bonds, no triple bonds or ring or cyclic structures. Now I'm going to draw the line angle structure for this and I'm going to be using line angle structures quite a bit in this video. And in a previous video I explained how to draw line angle structures and what they represent. So here we have one, two, three, four, five carbons. One, two, three, four, five carbons represented at those ends of the segments or the vertices. And next I'm going to draw uh, an unsaturated hydrocarbon molecule where there's one degree of unsaturation. So we could talk about unsaturation in terms of degrees of unsaturation. So one degree of unsaturation is where we lose or remove two hydrogen atoms. So for every pair of hydrogen atoms that are removed or lost, we could say one degree of unsaturation has been added to what would have been the original fully saturated um, hydrocarbon. So in this particular example, uh, I'm going to remove two hydrogens, and that means the formula will then become C5H10. Okay, so we don't we no longer have that plus two. Now one degree of unsaturation could come about if a double bond was added to the hydrocarbon molecule, and so I'm going to um, <clears throat> redraw this Lewis structure down here. Now this Lewis structure is of C5H12, so I'm going to add a double bond, and in doing so you'll notice that I need to remove two hydrogens. So I'm going to use a red line to represent uh, the addition of the double bond, and I'll put the double bond that's at the end of the molecule here. And notice now these two carbon atoms have too many electrons. The Lewis structure is not correct for these two carbon atoms. So that means I'm going to need to remove some electrons, and so I could do that by removing these two hydrogens. And when I do that, we'll have a coherent Lewis structure. Okay. And the line angle structure for this would look something like this, where I have the double bond at the end, and then that's two, three, four, five. And so how this works out is the double bond here, located there in the, in the line angle structure, so that takes care of these two carbons. These remaining carbons are represented by these 
segments here where we have these vertices and the end of the line segment, one, two, three. Now, a degree of unsaturation could be introduced to the fully saturated molecule by creating a ring structure from the original fully saturated molecule. So I'm going to, again, redraw the Lewis structure here and show you that. So we start with this fully saturated hydrocarbon, and then I'm going to draw a ring structure or a cyclic structure. So to do that, I'm going to connect the ends of this uh, straight chain hydrocarbon. In other words, connect this carbon here to this carbon with a single bond. So to do that, I could simply draw this really long loopy line, but in doing so, I'm going to need to sacrifice two hydrogens. And the correct way to draw a five-membered carbon ring, the correct way to draw a five-membered hydrocarbon, cyclic structure, the correct way to draw a five-carbon ring is to give it a little bit more geometrical shape. In this case, it looks sort of like a pentagon. And now I'm going to add the hydrogens, as I did before, in green. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So here, this CnH2n is pretty clear that there's five carbons, and there's twice as many hydrogens as there are carbons. And the line angle structure for this would be as follows. It's simply a pentagon, where the carbons are located here at the vertices or the connection points of these line segments, the five carbons, and then the understanding is that what's not seen or not noted here are the hydrogens, in this case all CH2s. As I mentioned before, this is only one structure for this double bonded C5H10 um, hydrocarbon molecule. There are a number of other structures where you can move the double bond around and include some branching. For example, you could have the double bond be one more carbon in. So I'll put it two carbons in and then have the remaining carbons. Now there's some more interesting structural detail that needs to be explained when you start to move the double bond into the molecule. But for now, I'm just going to point out that the double bond can be moved into the molecule to come up with another Lewis structure. Then we could also include some branching. So if we take this original structure, and I just put two carbons here, I could add that fifth carbon right there. A similar thing could happen down here with the cyclic structure. It's not necessary that a five carbon ring is restricted to C5H10. There could be a three carbon ring with a couple of branches, and that's one variation of a three carbon ring with branches. I could have one branch of two carbons right there, so where are the carbons here? Okay, let's take a close look. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to leave it to you to count the hydrogens and verify that there are, in fact, ten hydrogens in these two line angle structure for these three membered rings with the branches. And then we could also have a four carbon ring with one branch. So there are many possibilities once you start to increase the number of carbons and hydrogens in a hydrocarbon molecule. The degree of unsaturation is not limited to just one. There could be multiple degrees of unsaturation. Here's an example formula or model formula where there are two degrees of unsaturation in a hydrocarbon. Notice that we're subtracting two more hydrogens from the molecule or or from the model that would have one degree of unsaturation. So I'm going to again choose five carbons to start with, and I'm going to also just start off with a fully saturated hydrocarbon molecule, and now go to this uh, unsaturated molecule that has two degrees of unsaturation. So C5, now H, let's see, uh, 2n minus 2. Well, 2 times n, or 2 times 5 is 10. Subtract 2, it will be 8. So again, we went from C5H12 to C5H10, one degree of unsaturation, and now C5H8, which is two degrees of unsaturation. 
Two degrees of unsaturation comes about with one triple bond, or we could include the two ring structures if possible, um, two double bonds, or one ring structure if possible with a double bond. That's all if it's possible, meaning are there enough carbon atoms to accommodate these cyclic structures. So uh, I'll begin with the triple bond, three lines. So there's two carbons here, three, four, five. So there are the uh, five carbons, one here, one here, three, four, five. So two degrees of unsaturation, because if you compare this to the fully saturated hydrocarbon, just draw that again, and we'll include the hydrogens as green lines. And if I want to include a triple bond, say at the end, add two lines here, well, that means I'm going to need to remove four hydrogens because the, these carbons here at the ends, right around here, are way overloaded with electrons in the Lewis structure. I'm going to remove one pair and then another pair. And then now you can verify that this Lewis structure is coherent. To map out the line angle structure, there's that carbon at the end, there's one carbon in on the triple bond, and then you have the remaining saturated uh, carbons. Okay, so that's one place to put the triple bond. And as before, there are a number of different structures that can come about when you have um, many carbons in the hydrocarbon. So we can move the triple bond further into the molecule. So, uh, and we could also include branching. So this has got to be straight out. This is a linear geometry. We'll get into that later in the semester. So we have three carbons here. One, two, three, actually four. One, two, three, four. And then the fifth carbon, okay? So let's map this out. One, two, three, four, five carbons. We could also include some branching, okay? Now I'm going to uh, shorten this hydrocarbon chain, including a triple bond, and take this carbon and include and include it as a branch on the sort of other end of this line angle structure. Draw that triple bond again, and have a branch there. So now let's find the one, two, three, four carbons in the straight chain, so to speak, or in the chain of the hydrocarbon. And this is the branch, this guy right here have you just verify that there are in fact eight hydrogens in all of these three structures that I drew. And now we'll get creative and include two double bonds in the structure. Since there are two degrees of unsaturation, that could come about with two double bonds or two rings if possible, but because we only have five carbons, we cannot have two ring structures. The smallest ring structure for organic molecules is a three-membered ring. So if we consume three carbon atoms to form a three-membered ring, we only have two carbon atoms left, so we can't have two rings in this particular, or for this particular formula. So I'll start with one ring, which is a four-membered ring, and include the fifth carbon out here in a double bond configuration. So how does that work? Well, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and I'm gonna want you to verify the hydrogens. We have two degrees of unsaturation, one ring and one double bond. Another example, we have a ring structure and the double bond is within the ring structure. And now there's a fifth carbon and that fifth carbon can be placed anywhere on this ring here or here. If you put it back here, it's the same as putting it here. Uh, so there are two additional places, or there are two places where you could place that fifth carbon. And I'll do that one more time. You could place that fifth carbon here. I'll just use a different color. Or you could place that fifth carbon here. And if I draw both of those structures with that color, there are two more possible structures. Now let's try uh, a structure where we have a three-membered ring. Let's go back to black. A three-membered ring would include one degree of unsaturation, and you could include a double bond in a three-membered ring. 
not very stable, but on paper we could account for the double bond easily, of course. And now there are two degrees of unsaturation in this ring structure. But we have two carbons remaining because we use three of the five. So I could include those two carbons that remain in a number of different places. I could have them at connected to this one carbon across from the double bond. I could have the two carbons, one on each end here. And another possibility is to have one carbon on the double bond and one carbon um, at the other end where there is not a double bond. So lots of possibilities, again, as you start to get uh, increasing the number of carbon atoms and introducing cyclic structures. And finally, let's have a structure where there are only two double bonds. I'm going to include a double bond at the end, have a single bond, and then include another double bond here. So right now there's one, two, three, four, and then I'm going to add a fifth, add a fifth carbon. So you have one, two, three, four, five. Once you start introducing double bonds into hydrocarbons, there can be some interesting structural complications. Once a double bond is introduced to a hydrocarbon with more than three carbons, there begins interesting structural variations can come about. I'm not going to get into that in this video, but suffice it to say, here's one possibility where there are two double bonds in a five carbon hydrocarbon where there's two degrees of unsaturation. Another possibility is if we put the double bonds right up against one another. So here is one, two, three, four, five. On paper, we could draw any molecule we want as long as it obeys all the rules for Lewis structures. Whether these molecules ex exist in reality is another question. But let's get, um, let's continue having fun being creative. So there's a, a second possible structure, and then I could have the two double bonds sort of in the middle of the molecule, and then have the other two carbons at the end. One, two, three, four, five. I prepared a table showing the possibilities of degrees of unsaturation. Hypothetically, this table could go on until infinity, but I started off with the fully saturated molecule. Now, N represents whole numbers, like one, two, three, four, etc., not fractional values or decimal values. So N really is the minimum number of carbons to meet uh, at least one of the circumstances or one structure. So we start off with a fully saturated structure, no double bonds, no triple bonds, no cyclic structures, and we could go down as far as N being equal to one or greater. To introduce one degree of unsaturation or two degrees of unsaturation, N must be at least equal to two. And then beyond that, N could be greater uh, could be four, six, and beyond. And I listed the possibility, or the possible structure types that are associated with each, with each of these formulas to represent the different degrees of unsaturation. So I encourage you to try um, and choose some ends or number of carbons for each of these general formulas and come up with some different structures that could include for example, four double bonds, three double bonds, one ring, uh, two double bonds, two rings. Have some fun.